Star Wars Math, Jabba's Game Galaxy, was a game released by Lucas Learning in the year 2000 for Windows and Macintosh computers. It used characters from The Phantom Menace to teach basic math skills to kids age 6 and up. The game starts with the player's ship crashing into an asteroid field that is inexplicably surrounding Tatooine. Somehow you end up at Watto's shop. I suggest you pay a visit to Jabba's Game Plaza. You could win some credits if you're very, very lucky. The main goal of the game is to earn whoopee whoopee credits to build a new ship by playing the games at Jabba's Game Plaza. That's right, I said whoopee whoopee credits. That's actually from the movie, by the way. Oh, Jar Jar. That's classic. Here's a data pad. If you have any questions about anything, use this to talk with my droid, Zeppo. Watto is voiced by Andy Seacombe, who played him in the movie, and I think he did a really good job. This map of Jabba's Game Plaza serves as the game's hub screen, allowing you to choose any of the four games, as well as return to Watto's shop, or go to the garage to work on your ship. You can play the games in any order you choose and play them as many times as you like. In fact, you're basically required to play them all multiple times to get enough credits for even a basic ship. We'll start with Rats Race, which is hosted by the diminutive pod racer Rats Tyrell. It's essentially a board game, and the object of the game is, well, I'll let Rats explain it. The object of this game is to reach the center square before your opponent does. The first one there wins all the whoopee yuppie! <laughs> Rats didn't have any dialogue in the film. Well, aside from this, that is. But here he is voiced by Terry McGovern, who did some voice work in the original Star Wars films, and most notably provided the voice of Launchpad McQuack in DuckTales. I'm a fan of McGovern, although his Rats Tyrell is a little on the shrill side. The fact that Rats is alive and well in this game indicates that it is actually set before the events of The Phantom Menace. You spin the wheel and then move that many tiles. When you land on a square, you have to answer a simple math problem. Get it right and you get that square's color. You want to get all five colors and then make it to the center of the board. It's a lot like Trivial Pursuit. Most of the problems are extremely easy, but of course they're targeting a pretty young age group here. In this case, you just have to tell which of the two shapes is bigger, or if they're the same size. Nice job! You got good brain! A lot of the sound effects in this game are pretty annoying. <laughs> But I guess that's being accurate to the film when you think about it. The game's random nature can make it take quite a long time to play, and it seems less skill-based than the other games as well. All in all, this is probably my least favorite of the games. Next, we'll look at Digioto, which is hosted by Team Topagales, a pod racer best remembered for being shot down by a Tusken Raider during the race. Oh, I don't care what universe you're from, that's gotta hurt. The character had no lines in the film, but in this game he was voiced by Michael Sorich, who has done a lot of voice work for American and Japanese animation, among other things. Come on, give me a good one! Your play gets me worked up! Uh Your play gets me worked up! Let's just ignore that, shall we? In this game, each player is given four robots, each with a number on it. You can discard one, but must place the others so that they make up a three-digit number. Each time you play, you have a different goal, such as getting the lowest or highest number, or getting closest to a target number. There is some strategy involved, since you don't know what the upcoming numbers will be, and you have to decide which of the numbers to discard and where to place the others. Overall, it's not a bad attempt at teaching the concept of place value, but there's not much variety due to a limited number of options. Next up, we have Dueling Dice, starring none other than pod racing champ Sibulba. In the film, Sibulba spoke Hatties with subtitles. <laughs> Wampity. 
but in this game he speaks English. Welcome, my friend. This is the game of dueling dice, and I am Sebulba. In both cases, he's played by Louis McLeod. It's kind of interesting to hear him speak English in Sebulba's voice. The game itself is basically a version of blackjack, played with dice instead of cards, and with a limit of 30 instead of 21. So the player who gets closest to 30 without going over wins. However, you do need to correctly add your dice rolls to your current score, and that's mainly where the math comes into play. The pit droids are there to help younger kids count up their score. As in actual blackjack, there's a pretty heavy random element involved here, but the games themselves are a lot quicker and there's a little strategy involved in deciding when to stop. This isn't a bad one, actually. Good answer. I did get the impression that Sebulba won a bit too often, but he is a cheater after all, so maybe that's as it should be. Looks like I win. Last but far from least, we have Hollow Checks, hosted by Jabba the Hutt himself. In the film, Jabba speaks Huttese with subtitles. <laughs> And he's played by himself. Okay. In the game, he was voiced by Clint Pajakian, who is actually a famous composer of video game soundtracks, including the music for the Uncharted games. In addition to that, though, he also provided the voice of Java in multiple games in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, the Off-Worlder is back for more holochecks. <laughs> it's a little bizarre to hear Jabba speak English, but I actually really like the voice he did for the character. The game itself is very similar to Checkers, although you do have a variety of board shapes to choose from, which does make things a bit more interesting. Jabba is pretty vocal during gameplay, but many of the things he says do seem a little out of character for a heartless alien gangster. I pay better attention next time. You're almost as good as I am. Ah, Bantha Poodle! I play like a slug! But his true nature does come through from time to time. Hmm, you'll pay for that move. Overall, it's not a bad game, and it's probably the one that an adult could come closest to actually enjoying. Still, I found some of the games lasted for too long, and Jabba's quips do get old after you hear them a few dozen times. Gah, impossible! Huts never lose! We must play again, I insist! After you've saved up enough credits, you can visit Watto in his shop and purchase parts for your ship. Good choice! Now let's see those credits! You need to count out your credits manually, which gives kids a little experience in calculating money. Thank you! The part is yours! You need to go to the ship hangar to install it on your ship. Not bad, not bad. You've bought all of the ship parts you need to build your ship. In the hangar, you can not only install the parts that you've bought, but also paint your ship in a custom paint scheme. There's even an option to print a picture of your ship, or to print a blank coloring book page to color by hand. The choices of colors and patterns are fairly limited, but uh, it's still kind of a cool option. Here's my ship. Pretty awesome, right? Once you finally have your ship outfitted, you can go out looking for space junk that you can sell to Watto. Numbers with two digits. Here you shoot asteroids while trying to pick up pieces of junk that match the rule you're given. On easy mode, this might just be two-digit numbers, but on hard mode, you have to do some real math to figure out which junk you want to get. <laughs> Equal to eight times fifty. Got it! You blasted it to space dust! You got it! Good aim! You blasted it to space dust! You got it! One problem is that your ship has a limited amount of fuel, so if you're not careful to pick up fuel canisters while out in space, you might find yourself losing money, since the fuel costs more than you can get for the junk you collected. Everyone has their good days and their bad. Be sure to collect the space junk that fits the rule. Oh, what a shame. Looks like you're out of fuel. 
You can upgrade your ship's parts, which should keep some kids playing for a while, but I had trouble sticking with it after this point, so I'm not sure if there's anything special that happens if you fully upgrade your ship. In conclusion, this isn't a bad game for young Star Wars fans to work on basic math concepts, and it's kind of interesting to play games with characters like Jabba and Sebulba. I should mention, though, that getting this to work on modern computers might be an issue. Windows machines might be okay, I'm not sure, but due to the transition to Mac OS X since this came out, it's very hard to get this to run on a modern Mac. I had to use a program called Sheepshaver to emulate an older Mac inside of my MacBook Pro, which was a lot of work and probably not worth it if you just want to play the game. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, and you might actually be interested in these videos as well. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.